In this video I'm gonna look at some more mysterious CPUs from Taobao. There is a whole bunch of 5th gen Broadwell CPUs that have appeared on the Taobao pages of the sellers that previously sold just the QL2X and QL3X CPUs. This is interesting because the fifth generation was kind of a forgotten one because they were so late with these CPUs on the desktop at least and there wasn't many of them made and they are very rare however now they are converting mobile 5th gen CPUs to desktop socket and it's uh, definitely interesting to see what these can offer one of the CPUs I'm looking at is an engineering sample of an uh, IE7 and uh, the other one is supposed to be Xeon which is weird because I don't remember ever seeing mobile or other BGA Xeons. One nice thing compared to the QL2X and other 7th and uh, upper generation BGA to LGA CPUs is that uh, these 5th gen CPUs do not require any BIOS modification on the motherboard. However, they only do work on H97 or Z97 boards. And uh, all the boards are not guaranteed to work with this, of course. This board that I have here is from AliExpress and it's an H97 board which is apparently like Z97 but it doesn't have quite as much overclocking specific options you can still modify the clock speed and CPU voltage though I run these benchmarks with a Vega 56 which has been BIOS flashed with a Vega 64 BIOS. Everything worked out of the box and I didn't need to tweak anything in the BIOS, it just booted right into Windows. But then I noticed one strange thing with this board and that is that it doesn't seem to have any VRM cooling so at this point I realized that it's probably not an ideal board for benchmarks. This first one showed up as an i7 engineering sample. It has a very low clock speed at 1.9 and turbo at 2.8 but it still throttles down further when under multi-thread stress so not a great CPU overall not the best one in Cinebench certainly and uh, also not 
a good CPU for gaming as you can see from this Saddle of the Tomb Raider footage the frame rate is going between 20 and 30 fps and uh, yeah it at least for this game it's uh, not enough even for very playable experience it was dirt cheap though and uh, I think this would make a good home or office PC CPU when paired with a cheap motherboard but that is quite a problem with the C97 or H97 requirement Moving to the little more expensive and uh, weird Xeon mobile CPU or whatever this is it seems to be much better than the earlier CPU because it can sustain higher clocks even under load as we can see when we compare the Cinebench results with the earlier i7 engineering sample also it can run Shadow of the Tomb Raider at very comfortable performance taking into account that this game is quite CPU heavy at least comparatively and I recently tested Haswell i5's the regular desktop versions and uh, this seems to do about as well plus it of course has hyper threading which i5's wouldn't have there was uh, some FPS drops in this game though but that is nothing weird in this particular game so I just uh, checked with some other game CSGO here if these drops appeared in this game also and they didn't so this CPU looks very promising game performance wise I would have tested more games but I want to get a better motherboard to eliminate any possible effect that the non-existent VRM cooling could have so I ordered a regular gigabyte C Z97 board and uh, two more of these weird mystery CPUs from another seller this time so I'll make another video when those get here and uh, it will be interesting to see what those CPUs can do